deity and gutman wipe java with wap tech. I'm going to cover the subject of erasing information from media and social media. But first, the commentary for the day. We're going to cover one quick one. What is your take on the Zeltgeist group or Zeitgeist or Zit? Zit uh, pro tip. If you want your movement to be extremely popular and not seem snooty, don't use some obscure, hard to pronounce word for the name of it. Anyway, it's called the Zeitgeist movement. I prefer calling them a Zeitgeist. 2008, somebody named Peter Joseph advocating the transformation of society and economic system into a non-monetary system based on resource allocation and environmentalism. Basically, Marxist environmentalists. Go ahead and post. Get mad at me. This is not a. This is not an organization that is trying to make the world better. This is only from their behavior pattern and the stereotypical salesmanship crap that they do. Don't join them, and just assume they're full of it. That's my entire opinion. Their behaviors, however, are various movements to try to do this. Now, um, I've said this about the UN. This is a group of people doing hand waves and feel-good statements about stuff and not doing anything that would work. But let's talk about the non-monetary system based on resource allocation. What that means is, if something is needed, you give it to those who need it, or put it to whatever activity is needed. That means people don't have the right to assume, or control, or vote on anything. You're told that your assumptions and your opinions are not relevant. Pretty similar to many societies already but you're simply denied, by, by definition, the right to even complain about it because it will be ignored. Or on the other end of the spectrum, oh, it's a feel-good thing and it's very progressive, stack, blah, 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 all that snowflake crap. Um, to be blunt, a capitalist system with a very firm bark-preventing zapping collar around its tyrannical, psychotic neck works well, rather well. Our capitalist system we have, once when it's tamed and beaten into submission and treated like a biatch, works fine. Um, it's not that I'm saying don't mess with it. I'm saying in the current status it has, if you overtly control large, powerful corporations and prevent them from having special interest groups be able to bribe politicians... And if you keep them in check by constantly checking them when they lie, it works. But that means you're going to get pushback. That means you're going to get harassment and crap. That's This is the thing I fight. Uh, the zitgeist movement doesn't fix any of this. And I've run into people who claim to be part of it, who are very special snowflakey, and want to keep things very much in the hands of whoever's powerful. Even the people they claim they're trying to fight, they're actually on their side. It's not a conspiracy theory. So anyway, that's all I got to say about it. That's my opinion. This is not based on looking up anything. This is not based on having any proof. I'm just going to leave you the Wikipedia article and you can go make your own decisions. That's my opinion. That's from the behavior of the people who are, who are uh, promoting it. Their behavior matches the same thing as every asshat I've ever seen trying to push large numbers of people around when they're outvoted. And I'm, in case you can't tell, I'm in favor of anarchy mode voting systems where we all get to vote on everything, and if you don't get enough people to vote, no changes happen. If less than 50% of the people will vote that year, their votes don't count. Everybody has to vote. Everybody has to consciously say, I have made a decision, and I've made my voice heard. Because if you're sitting there whining but not voting, nothing changes, because the majority of people don't want a change to happen. That's my opinion. But that also means we'd probably still be stuck not orbiting our planet with satellites by now, because people say, I don't need that. We have a very comfortable country in the United States. By the way, I'd like to point out that when people talk about um, the Americas, or everybody living in America, please remember there's North and South America, and people south of the, uh, of the equator really do take that person. Uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is another video I'm going to do later. Anyway, if you want to, you can look up Zeitgeist Group, Hoax, or Debunked, and look up the movies. There's a movie based on it. 
I don't know if they're associated with it. I mean, I'm not saying it's named after the group and it's their movie. I'm just saying everybody who's ever brought up the subject and used that word, even though that word actually has a specific meaning originally, they go out of their way to prove to me I shouldn't listen to them. That's a way of thinning out people who will, who will disagree with them and creating a very polarized atmosphere. But they're not inclusive. They're not trying to get everybody's opinion. And that's a gigantic red flag. Just covering it really quickly. Next. No, they're not Nazis. I know they're not. They are what they are. Next commentary. Yes, Pine in the Sky group. And I compare them with the UN, except the UN actually has some power. Next. I did a video about someone just asking questions. Is it normal for the upper atmosphere to have this kind of wind turbulence? And of course, they used a bigger number. Kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour. Primary audience is not in Europe. That's a big red flag. Okay, well I can get um, uh, 40 barrels to the hog's head. No, 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 no. Uh, 40 furlong... No, no, no. 40 rods to the hog's head. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, is, which is literally one-tenth of a mile per hundred gallons. But anyway, um, or something crazy like that. Uh, <laughs> the point I'm making here is using obscure words when they're really, really not necessary, or measurements. It also has knots and a few other things on it. But it was a website that tells you how fast the wind's moving. Which way the wind moves. And it's showing the wind movement at the South Pole and there's like a hurricane going on or a cyclone. It's always a high... Anyway, what I'm making about this is someone was desperate to find something to post for an hour and three minutes. So I put up a video that was like 30 seconds or something like that explaining it away. Welcome to the world of critique. Anyway. Uh... Basically, people commenting that he keeps the person who keeps saying those things doesn't know what he means and keeps deleting commentary. I love it. It's so easy to change it around to make it look scary. Yes, Hanover, and of course the la the other one was Tom Spinham, PA. I guess you're in Pennsylvania. America's writing instrument. Anyway, next, not America, North America. Anyway, next, Chicken Little. Thank you for the endorsement. I hope you're not a bad person. I'm just kidding. Uh, Sig Noose. Someone asked. Are you, you can't call people out anymore. Sig Noose, because I've named your channel name, if I don't spell it out, but if I named it, technically you can get away with flagging people's videos as a community guidelines violation, and YouTube and Google will refuse to tell you what the hell they're talking about. Because that's how the game is played. Sort of like my Windows computer doing something infuriating when I was overwriting files today, but we'll get to that next. Next one, Miss Explora. I'll, I should have watched this first and saved an hour. Gotta stop doing that. P.S. Nice find. Yeah, I know. Um, that's I posted that in the bottom of the video about the air currents. At least I didn't waste an hour of your life. If it's a single subject and it's that easily debunked and people spend an hour, that means they're infomercialing it. You're investing emotional time, but people can skip ahead in the video, so I did. This assertion was crap. So anyway, next. Have you seen Paranoid Times Channel? Blah, 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 etc. Thank everybody there, this is one example, for all of your suggestions. I'm going to try to get to them all. Just saves me a lot of work. I'm going to go up to the top here real quick and point out something. And I'll probably put it in the title. It's over 500 subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. You don't have to. You're taking a chance at this. You're going to get flack. Thank you for posting your comments. And if any of you see a negative comment, flag it. Somebody towards you, not towards me. I can take care of myself. Um, and if you see anybody coming in there acting out of character, assume it's out of character. Next. Uh, 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 
And there, now we're at Gutman DOD Wipe Myth. What is DOD Wipe? Here are the two methods that the Department of Defense uses to wipe their own media. <coughs> if it's magnetic based, <coughs> electromechanical, that means it's tape, uh, floppy, yes they still use them, or hard drive based where it's magnetic field recording. Not solid state, not thumb drives, not solid state drives, uh, not memory chips. The method the US military and government uses is one, if it absolutely positively cannot be recoverable, it has to be burned, melted down, shredded in reverse order. It's shredded, then melted down, and then incinerated if anything can burn off. This causes all the magnetic fields to scramble due to the Curie point effect where magnetic fields can't maintain themselves above a temperature. It's shredded, so it's mechanically impossible to retrieve it. Shredding requires it to be shredded down to one millimeter by one millimeter, which means basically it's ground almost into a powder if it's a hard drive disk. Floppy disks are an exception. And burning these things usually destroys all that. And then last, certainly not least, degaussing and well, basically that's all there is to it. That's what is done only if it is, is absolutely imperative that nothing be retrievable. For just less than that, there are two methods for wiping a drive, but they require preparation, and not preparation H. The first preparation is the drive has to start out its life as being unused, brand new, and then encrypted using asymmetrical key encryption. Basically, there's a key in the hard drive and a key external that is needed to make the hard drive readable. <coughs> if you don't have the external key, or if you just change the key internally, which is really, really easy and fast, it's unretrievable even if you have the external key. Both keys have to be stable. You can copy the key out of the hard drive and save it so that you could scramble that and then place it back again and retrieve the drive data. The second fastest is to tell the drive itself to electromechanically erase its disk. It will do this to the point it fails, or it'll do it until it's done. Either way, it'll overwrite as much data as possible, and it starts at the beginning of the hard drive, which is the most likely location for the data. If it's encrypted and you tell it to do that, and then you change the encrypted key, it is absolutely not retrievable, but that's unnecessary because just not having the key will do that. Next the next fastest method. Remember, one of these just requires you just to raise it. Anyway, overwriting the hard drive totally with randomized code. That's excessive and unnecessary, and even the Department of Defense, NSA, and hackers and geeks and data recovery geeks like me have found out that if you write zeros to a hard drive, the only stuff that's going to show up is where the hard drive is damaged and it can't be really written to. Next. If the hard drive has an area that's damaged and it's not able to be accessed at all, any area, any area that has been rewritten from spares, the drive must be mechanically destroyed unless you can tell it to overwrite its own settings, reset everything, and write to those areas. And it must confirmably write to them even if it ends up destroying the heads. Now for solid state drives, memory chips, and anything else that isn't based on magnetic field. Uh, you can degauss these things, that'll do it quickly too, but that doesn't always overwrite it either. It's better just to have a hard drive show up encrypted. But now we'll get on to microchips. You cannot overwrite microchips, including solid state memories like thumb drives, in a way that is ever really safe because they very quickly rewrite spare areas. That means you can never truly erase a thumb drive unless it's in perfect condition. And even then, it has unaccessible or inaccessible spare areas. However, if it's hit with a blowtorch, that will destroy its ability to be accessed, and then you can grind it up. That's about all of it. And then last, I'm going to explain that software tools that I use today to overwrite a drive to make it inaccessible that made a backup copy of the data I was overwriting are on my blacklist. I was doing it for a customer. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with all that. Links below in the description.